What's up guys, the Strong Boys 19 here. This is going to be the next album review into the Genesis discography. Well, it has been a few months since I have last reviewed the debut album from Genesis to Revelation, and I am going to be coming back to the band after I had seen the band live. So I thought I would do my best to make more of these Genesis album reviews as consistent as possible. So I'm going to be reviewing the band's second album, entitled Trespass. Trespass was released October 23rd, 1970, and they were recording this album inside London's very iconic studio of Trident Studios. And it was released through Charisma in the UK and Impulse in the US. John Anthony has done the production for this record, so... This is where most Genesis fans will say that this is the beginning of their legendary era with the Peter Gabriel lineup. But this is the second and final album to credit Anthony Phillips on the guitar and their only drummer to have John Mayhew with the band for the only time for the making of this album. So with the comparing into the debut album of From Genesis to Revelation, that album has been very much their most ignored record because it was really lo-fi and raw sounding and it's nothing like what Genesis would later on become because that album's sound of genres are mostly through like a psychedelic, folky, baroque pop inspired kind of flavours. Whereas with this album, Trespass delivers into the beginning where most Genesis fans will credit as like the uh, the beginning of their uh, progressive rock movement. And the cover art is definitely a huge, bigger look of identity. Whereas with the blank, minimal look of the first album, it was just made, you know, off the time for me. But I think that Trespass, with the look of the album artwork and the style of sound that the band were later on approaching after this album, this is an immediate improvement over the sound of the first record. So, with this instrumentation package of an album, this is really, really, really good for what it is. And this was going through uh, different movements during the uh, behind the scenes making of process of this album because a lot of the members were still uh, college school students at this time, just like what they've done on the first album, but they have been planning ahead, moving into a lot more of the uh, schedule with a contract onto Charisma Records and more touring involved. The instrumentation surrounding this album incorporates a lot more onto melody and a lot of tonality with more instrumentations that were more, I would say, adventurous and less onto the poppiness than what the debut had. And this cover art, to me, is one of my favourite Genesis album covers. features a knife that was slashing across the front. And it was also the first album cover to be credited by Paul Whitehead, who would later on be credited for the album covers on Nursery Crime and Foxtrot. Looking for someone, the opening track is my personal favourite number on this. I really like the gentle build-up, and as when the band goes into full swings, there's a lot more... Uh, diversity and complexity. There's just so much more onto the uh, driving force and the uh, capacity of the musicianship because with the sound onto the first record, there was barely anything definitive and rhythmic. There's a lot more of a rhythmic action going on. And Looking for Someone, to me, is one of my favorite Genesis tracks of all time, really. And I think that. It's just a fantastic opener with a lot of these uh, wild, uh, dramatic uh, performances. 
And Peter Gabriel's vocals on this album in particular, he adds cleans and the sound of his voice to me was really much more vibrant and natural. To the other tracks like most popular number on the album, the closing track of The Knife, this was actually at first going to be made as a tribute to the band of The Nice, who Genesis were big fans of. But the way that this was made, this was when Genesis were exploring into something much more um, heavier. And this was like really, really dramatic. And it's just like a pretty much like an explosive, uh, maddening sound. This does incorporate some really great, phenomenal keyboard work. And as well as with Phillips's guitar work, there's a lot of these performances that Anthony has done onto this album that were really, really good. And Tony Banks' keyboard work for this record alone, involving the knife, just really adds in a lot more character and charm to the knife. And it would later on become a live staple for the band later on. Other tracks go, there is some more onto the uh, passages on folky elements. When you hear the instruments on 12-string guitar connections, very calm and beautifully melodic uh, textures that Genesis decides to explore. That's what I like about this album, I say the most, because Trespass is obviously the beginning where a lot of the fans will say that they are finding their ways, they're finding their own path, and I think Trespass as an album really is beginning uh, a sound where Genesis gets better and better and better, and as well with the production on Trespass, it is really, really good. I think that the drums sounded uh, crisper and same onto the uh, rawer sound of the distorting guitars and the prominent bass lines. I think that the keyboards were adding in a lot more flashes and they were more consistent than what From Genesis to Revelation was. And I think that the uh, switching forward approaches into this kind of mark of musicianship and tone for the band, Trespass is a very, very well made record. And I think one of the other tracks of Dusk and Visions of Angels were pretty much underrated and there's quite a lot to really absorb. I think that some of the acoustic playing of this album works just as efficiently, but with other tracks like The Knife and Looking for Someone, they, to me, were bringing in some more of a distinction mark for the uh, later progression of Genesis as a band. I would still give Anthony Phillips and also John Mayhew a lot of the credit because I think John's drumming on this album was really effective and I think that he has done a very good job. That is not until we obviously later on hear the introduction of Phil Collins as the band's drummer and vocalist onto the next album of Nursery Crime which I will talk about later on after the review into this album. But I'll have to say that Trespass, as an album, it, it does get pretty much underrated, and it's one of my uh, underrated favourites in the Genesis discography. It's not perfection, like with Selling England by the Pound or Foxtrot whatsoever, but I think to follow up the first album, this was a big change of tone and uh, presentation for the band's sound. And not to mention that the rest of the band involving Mike Rutherford and as well as the, uh, the sound of Tony Banks, etc. They were uh, building more, more and more chemistry. And I think that is even more of a difference of an album's sound and I think Trespass definitely deserves a lot more of the attention and more of the positivity. I wouldn't say that it's a strong album, there's just a few uh, pieces of songs that for me just don't match up as like 
uh, perfection quality wise, but this is a very, very good album for what it really is. So I am curious to know what you personally think and address your views on Trespass in the comments down below. That's all I would like to say for the second Genesis Studio album, Trespass. I'm going to give this album an 8 out of 10. And this is, for me, obviously a better record than from Genesis to Revelation. But I will stand by my personal views on Trespass as one of these other Genesis albums uh, before Selling England and Foxtrot that you need to listen to and uh, admire what the band are trying to make and build here. So, that's my review for Trespass by Genesis. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll keep you guys posted for more videos in the near future.